Hello everybody! Today we are doing something really special. We are in California driving the Lucid Air lineup. And this is the first time I've really experienced Lucid vehicles, so it's very much a learning experience for me. Um, I've learned a lot about the company, I've learned a lot about the cars, and I'm really excited that you guys are here for the ride with me because it's been really cool. Um, so I want to talk about the Lucid brand a little bit um, because I imagine that a lot of you don't know too much about it because it's a relatively new company. So Lucid is based in California, in just outside of San Francisco. So it is a Silicon Valley brand. Um, the whole idea of being in California really influences a lot of what this EV maker does. So being in California influences their design, their aesthetic choices, the vibes they're going for. And being a Silicon Valley company, Lucid is a very tech forward company. So a lot of their EVs are very, very high tech. They really lean into that high tech vibes uh, for all their EVs. But the best thing about it is to me so far, everything has been very approachable. So first of all, they've consolidated all of their design studios. So everyone works now from one studio. Um, that creates a certain level of cohesion that is really, really evident when you drive the vehicles. Everything just comes together so, so nicely. Um, right now, there are going to be four Lucid Airs available in Canada. I'm driving the Pure model right now, which is the entry level model. It is a single motor rear wheel drive model. All the other models, the uh, Touring, the Grand Touring and the Sapphire come standard with all wheel drive. But what sets Lucid apart from other EV makers is their battery tech, which I'm really impressed with. So the number one thing that a lot of people talk about when buying EVs is range. And honestly, Lucid EVs have probably the highest range available right now. So the entry level model, the Pure, which is the one I'm driving, the rear drive model, it is officially rated to have 660 kilometers of range, which is massive. Like nobody else is getting those kinds of numbers right now. They have a Grand Touring model that is also rated for over 800 kilometers of range. And that kind of high battery performance is just unseen right now in the EV industry. So I'm really happy that that's where they're going because honestly, the ranges need to be this high to get people excited and comfortable with driving EVs. In terms of charging, most high-end EVs these days are built on a 400 volt architecture, which enables super fast charging. The Lucid Air has more than double that. It's built on an architecture that has over 900 volts. Um, and what that means is that you could basically add 300 kilometers of range in under 20 minutes, hooked up to a 350 kilowatt fast charging station. And I know those stations are hard to find, but the fact that the Lucid Air already has so much high range at over 600 kilometers of range and is also able to enable super fast charging that is basically higher than what the industry standard is right now is really impressive. That's the kind of stuff that we need to see that will get more people into EVs. Another thing I really wanted to mention was the build quality. So there is another, you know, Silicon Valley startup company that we all love to talk about and the build quality is notoriously bad. Um, I'm happy to report here that so far everything that I've experienced in the Lucid Air has been really great build quality. Everything is nice and tight. The materials are beautiful. The attention to detail is great. There's no creaks or rattles. Everything just feels really solid. Like, I'm not going to say it's a Porsche level of obsessive attention to detail and that level of refinement, but it's pretty much on par with anything BMW has to offer these days, which is really cool. So Lucid has done some pretty interesting things with its battery tech. So that's really important because by keeping the battery pack smaller and lighter, but more energy dense, it means less weight for it to carry around, which means extended range. And there's so much tech in here, I'm not gonna be able to get through all of it. But for me, the battery tech is segment leading and I can't wait until other automakers catch up to what Lucid's doing here. As far as design aesthetics go, I'm a really big fan of what they're doing here. First of all, these cars look sick driving around. I'm a really big fan of the low key, but very luxurious design. 
Uh, when we went to visit their design studios, they were really big on telling us that the Lucid EV is not for people who like ostentatious luxury. The Lucid EVs are really for people who want quiet luxury, you know, something that's very tech forward, something beautiful that isn't too flashy. And I think they achieved that really well. They actually really nailed it. Um, and that carries through in the interior as well. It is quite a minimal interior, but not for the sake of just being empty um, and not user friendly. The vibe in here is very mid-century modern. It's minimal without being cold because honestly, a lot of EVs can feel quite cold, but the materials they use in here are nice and warm and inviting. And I do think that the design is going to age really well. I think it's somewhat timeless. So right now I'm driving the pure model, which is the entry level one. I spent quite a bit of time driving the touring model, which is the one level up from this one. So I'm going to be talking a lot about my experience driving the touring model, which is, I think the one I would get. I was so impressed with how it drove. Honestly, it felt like a Porsche Panamera in the way it handles which is a huge compliment considering that Porsche basically sets the benchmark for vehicle dynamics and handling. And the fact that Lucid could even get close to that is a massive accomplishment for them. And so the steering, you know, isn't as good as what you would get in a Panamera, but it's still really good. It's nice and tight, has a great weight to it. It's a little bit more numb than something you would find in a Porsche, but that's totally fine. Um, what is also really impressive about how well it handles is that it didn't sacrifice comfort. So they were really big on ensuring that the Lucid Air was able to balance both performance and comfort. And they did such a good job. I honestly thought it had an air suspension or something like that, but it didn't. It's just standard steel springs. Um, the adaptive dampers are included and they do a really good job of making sure you can hurdle through these curvy roads really confidently, but also that the car is very comfortable and stable over rough roads. It has basically Mercedes E-Class or S-Class style comfort combined with Porsche Panamera handling. And I think that combination is fantastic. In the Grand Touring model I was driving earlier, I also wanted to point out that it was probably the best implementation of regenerative braking that I've ever felt in an EV, period. I had it on maximum regen and one pedal driving and the way it performed was so consistent and so well done. Like my mind was really blown by it and it was super easy to get used to. Um, and when you're driving around mountain roads like we are today with lots of technical curves and sweeping turns, it is so important for braking performance to be super consistent. And I think Lucid nailed it with the air. It is really, really hard to achieve such strong braking force without making it feel jarring or like you're gonna make people car sick. So I really enjoyed that braking experience. Um, it's honestly maybe one of the highlights of the touring model that I was driving earlier. This pure model I'm in now doesn't have that same level of one pedal driving. Um, it's still pretty good. This is a single motor, so there's less weight on the front. Um, I think I prefer the way the touring model handles a bit better. It feels just a little bit more substantial. Um, this one is lighter though, and there's that big benefit there. In terms of power, this entry level pure model that I'm driving has 420 horsepower, which for an entry level vehicle is honestly pretty good. Uh, the touring model I was driving earlier has 620 horsepower, and it was a rocket. And what's crazy about that is that it wasn't even the fastest one they have. So the Grand Touring one has even more horsepower and the Sapphire model, which is kind of their pinnacle of performance, it's kind of their halo model vehicle, that one has 1200 horsepower. So an absolute rocket. They said it could do zero to 100 in something like two seconds, which is absurdly quick. And you know, all EVs can be quick, but this level of quickness is really, really special, um, especially because it can do everything else really well too. Sweeping curves, confidently driving through all these mountain roads, but also super comfortable and mellow when you want it to be. This balance of performance and comfort is just excellent. So I gotta go back to the handling for a second because it was so impressive. So first of all, the Lucid Air has an absolutely massive wheelbase. 
And so because it was doing these turns and corners so tightly, I kind of assumed it had rear wheel steering, but it doesn't. So I really impressed by how small they made this sedan feel, considering how huge it is and considering how roomy it is inside. The way they packaged everything made the interior really roomy. So they showed us earlier where there was a guy who was like 6'7 in the front comfortably and there was a guy who was 6'6 comfortably sitting behind him. And that's basically unheard of. Like even in an S-Class, it is almost unheard of to have that much space. Um, there's a massive frunk. There is a huge trunk in the back as well. And in pictures, it looks kind of small, but in person, it's actually enormous. They also have some really clever practical details on the inside too, like the door pockets are quite big. Um, there's like a hidden compartment underneath the uh, touch screen where you can stash more stuff. The glove box is absolutely enormous and has some wireless chargers in there. And there's two, so you can tar charge two phones side by side. And the interface is honestly pretty good. There are minimal physical buttons. They didn't do away with them completely. Like there are some physical buttons for the HVAC controls, which is really nice. There's also some steering wheel controls that are really easy to use. Um, and what is so great about the interface is that it puts basically only the information you need. So it doesn't try to bombard you with too much information, which can get really distracting. Um, and so far I've been finding the system very user friendly to use. You know, it takes a little bit of getting used to uh, with most EVs because the controls are all centralized within the touchscreen. So doing stuff like adjusting your steering wheel position and your side mirrors, you'll have to do through the touchscreen. But it is very user friendly. I'm really happy with the user interface in here. I think they put a lot of thought into it. Um, and in general, I'm really impressed with how cohesive everything feels. It really feels like the people who worked on this car were in the same building and they were all friends um, and they're all really aware of what each other were doing. And I love that. That is weirdly hard to accomplish in, in vehicles and I think Lucid did a great job with that. So in terms of pricing, Lucid has positioned itself as a luxury brand. Again, not aiming for people who want something ostentatious and flashy, people who want something a bit more low key. So the starting price for a Lucid Air Pure, which is the rear drive model, uh, it starts at about $96,000, uh, which obviously means it's not going to be eligible for any government incentives. Um, and the pricing goes all the way up for the Sapphire model, which is the, the Halo kind of performance spec one. That one costs about over $300,000, and I can't remember the exact number, but it's up there. Um, and I gotta say, for a car that costs $96,000, it feels like it's worth the price. Like, I know that sounds like a lot of money to ask for an EV, but in terms of what it's offering, that massive range, massive horsepower, great driving dynamics, excellent build quality. I actually think it's pretty competitive versus everything else that's out there. Um, like just as an example, when I was driving the AMG EQE, it was really disappointing and it was very expensive. And my beef with it was that because it was so expensive, my expectations for it were a lot higher. With the Lucid Air Pure, my expectations were quite high and I can honestly say that Lucid has met my high expectations with their entry level model and I think it's really, really impressive. After my first experience with the Lucid Air lineup, I gotta say, I'm really impressed with what they've done here. Everything in terms of the vehicle cohesion, the dynamics and handling, the user interface, the design, the battery tech, the charging. I am really impressed how Lucid is really setting new benchmarks for the entire EV industry. And I think that's great because that pushes other EV makers to do better and better. And what's even more exciting is that yes, the, the Lucid Air vehicles are quite expensive right now, but they're also coming out with a Lucid Gravity model soon, which is a three row electric SUV. And in a couple years down the road, they're also gonna be coming out with some more attainable models, like a mid-size crossover. And I'm really excited to see what Lucid does. If you're in the market for an EV that is high end and just luxurious and beautiful and tech forward, you gotta check out the Lucid Air.